and I'm standing in need I know I don't call you like I used to But I need you to wrap your loving arms around me This world is going through some things And it's getting a little too hard to bear We searched all over for the remedy But it looked like we can't find it nowhere And then I remember you said to me You said call on my name and I'll be there And so I'm calling on the name of Jesus I'ma stay right here and wait I ain't going nowhere
tell me how long will it be? Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your praise and worship. Thank you for allowing us to worship and honor you. Father, I pray that you set this atmosphere ablaze. Bless this place, God. Give us an encounter with you. Thank you for a visitation, God. Father, this word goes forth. I pray that the people open their ears. I pray that they open their, their hearts to receive your word and begin to put this word into practice in their daily lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're still talking about giving. We have declared the month of November to be the month of giving. We started off the first Sunday of this month teaching on giving your life to Christ. And I pray that that bless you guys. I pray that you guys didn't just hear the word, but responded to the word and, and gave your life to Christ. Last week, we discussed four types of giving. We discussed four types of giving, uh, alms, tithing, the seed, and first fruit. Today, I want to teach on honoring God through our first fruit. We want to dig a little deeper on first fruit. And how do we honor God? Honoring God and giving. I want to challenge you all to up your giving game up. I need you to stretch yourself. I need you to go a little deeper when it comes to your giving. If you are in the grocery store, this is what I mean. If you happen to be in the grocery store, I know a lot of us are. We're preparing for Thanksgiving. Pay for the person that's behind you, groceries. If you're in the fast food drive through line, Pay for that person food that's, that's behind you. And don't, don't try to see how much grocery they got in the bucket to see if you can afford it. Just do it by faith. Step your giving game up this month and see how God moves in your life. Honoring God, celebrating God should not be a burden, especially for those that are grateful to God and knows what he has done in your life, your children's lives. How many times he's healed your children? How many times he healed you from sickness, from a cold, from a headache, from, a, from back pain, leg pain? How many of you are grateful for God? If you have your camera on, just simply raise your hands. If your camera's off, just simply write in the chat, I'm grateful for God. And if you want to go a little further, write in the chat, what are you grateful for? Bringing the first fruit should not be a burden, church. It's a celebration. We celebrate two things when we give our first fruit. We celebrate God and we celebrate our promotion and or our increase. We learned last week what first fruit is. And it should be a celebration because if you're celebrating first fruit, two things happen. One, you either got a promotion or an increase. So we want to celebrate that. That's why first fruit should be a celebration. So we learned last week what first fruit is. And we're going to go over it briefly today. But today I want you to learn how to honor God with your first fruit. Those of you that are logged in, you are already, you already blessed today. This word is going to bless your life, I'm telling you. And as I teach and you receive and practice what, I'm, what I am teaching, I want you to share your testimonies of how God has moved in your life after giving your first fruit. And, 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 and the word of God talks about the threefold cord, which is prayer, fasting, and giving. The threefold cord, prayer, Fasting and giving. The first fruit principle works only for the obedient ones. Our motivation for why we do what we do should always be obedience. Anytime we do something for the Lord, we should check our heart, check our motives. Why am I doing this? Am I doing this because I want something in return? I hate when people do that. They want to do you a favor because they want something from you. So we need to check our hearts at the door. We need to check our motives. We should want to make sure that we are not doing it for the wrong reasons. You feel me? We bring the first fruit offering, the first fruit to the Lord, because we love God. We honor God and we have the fear of God. So let's go to the Bible. I hope you got your Bibles. Let's go to the Bible where it discusses the first fruit. And so if you have your Bible, let's go to Exodus. Let's go to chapter 23, verse 16. Chapter six, ver, chapter 23, verse 16 and verse 19. And it reads, and the feast of harvest, meaning, you know, that remember the culture of Israel, the economy of Israel was based off agriculture back then. Right. 
So the terms that they use are agricultural terms. A lot of people like to say, oh, they use, I don't have to give my money. They, I can go give them cow. I can go give this. I, no, that's, that's the era they were living in. So Jesus said that the sower went out to sow. All the par parables that Jesus used were based off agriculture. And the feast of harvest, the first fruits of thy labors, which thou hast sown in the field, and the feast of ingathering, which is in the end of the year. That's important. When thou hast gathered in thy labors out of the field, the scripture says at the end of the year, at the end of the year, we're now at the approaching. We're now approaching the end of the year. Uh, so if you leave it up to me, my mind is already there. But we're approaching the end of the year. If we're approaching the end of the year. That means that we're approaching the beginning of the year as well. But in, in this case, this harvest was at the end that the Bible, the scripture we just read. This harvest was at the end. But you'll see that another harvest was also in the beginning. When we see this celebration in verse 19, it says, The first of the first fruits of thy land thou shalt bring into the house of the Lord thy God. God is saying, Bring the first fruit to the house of the Lord. Now, I know you all will have questions, and I pray that the Lord will open your eyes. Matter of fact, lift your hands right where you are. Come on, let's participate in, in, in church this morning. Lift your hands and say, Holy Spirit, open my eyes. Father, I pray that you open every listener's eyes to understand what first fruit is. Allow them to receive the revelation of the first fruit and the consequences of not giving you the first fruit. I pray that they understand what honoring you is. I pray that they understand what honoring you is all about. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Giving to God, especially through first fruits, is how we, his people, enter into a new economy. I don't know how many of you need to enter into a new economy. I don't like the world economy. We can't, we can't trust the world's economy. Anything can go wrong. But when you're in God's economy, you can trust God's economy because God's economy never fails. So we want to enter a new economy. How do we do that? God works with and by three P's, and that's principles, patterns, and positions. Everything that we do, church, we do it from a position, right? For example, what is our position when we go to God in prayer? When we go to God in prayer, we don't go as his nephew or his niece. We go as a son or daughter. When it comes to ministry, what is our position? Some of us may say, my position is a pastor. My position is an evangelist. Uh, my position is a praise and worship leader and so on and so forth. But when we move all of that out of the way, our position is a servant. When it comes to ministry, all of our positions are servants. So we operate in positions, patterns, and principles. A principle is a fundamental law, a fundamental truth in which we build upon. It's where we base everything and build upon it. A principle is an essential where everything else depends upon that principle. If your foundation is based off a principle, and your principle is strong, your house will not fall. Your principle determines what will happen after the law of the first fruit. You didn't get it. Let me say it this way. Whatever principle you live by, some of us live by worldly principles, some of us live by godly principles. Whatever principle that you live by, because each principle has consequences. It's biblical law. Whatever principle that we live by, once you operate in that principle, things will happen because each principle, each biblical principle has consequences. It's biblical law that certain things shall happen. Certain things shall follow once you do this or that, whatever it is that you do, whatever principle that you live by, certain things are going to follow that. So God is a man that cannot lie. So if he said it, then it's the truth. Let's go to the Bible because there's some questions that you have and I want to answer. Uh, Remnant Church, this is the month that would determine 
what will happen in your economy. This is the month, the month of November. This is the month that will determine what will happen in your economy. Now, this is what the Bible says. And if you understand this principle, which is the fundamental truth or fundamental law in which you will build the remaining of this year with. I'm giving you something to build the rest of this year with. It will determine what will occur, not only the remainder of the year, but also pouring over into 2022. So my mind is already in 2022. This principle works. I'm telling you, if you are on altar live and have practiced first fruit, please testify how it blessed your life in the chat. And um, for those of you who are just learning about first fruit, once you start operating in it, I want you to just send me a video clip. Send it to us, uh, a video of your testimony of how first fruit has blessed your life. So, as a matter of fact, let's do a poll. My wife's going to set up a poll. I want you to go to your polls right there on the right-hand side. Click the poll and answer this question for me. How many of you can say today, Pastor, I have given God, given to God, I have honored God in my first fruit, and I have seen the blessings in my life? Answer this question in the poll. Some may have not put this principle in practice because they had no idea. They never heard of first fruit, never was taught what first fruit was or is. However, once you have been taught, you now have no excuse. Now that you've been taught what first fruit is, how to operate in it, now go out and practice. Now you, have, you are held accountable. There should be no excuse as to why you are not blessed, why you are not reaping the benefits from practicing first fruit. No excuse. Proverbs 3 and 9 says, honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. Another version says, honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruit of all your crops income. Then your barns will be abundantly, abundantly filled. In other words, the first fruit is connected to abundance. I don't know who needs abundance in their life right now, but I can stand in an abundant blessing right now. I can, I, can, I can stand to be abundantly blessed. I need you guys to please pay attention because once you learn this principle, it's going to bless your life. I'm, I'm telling you. I need you to go ahead and teach it to your family. I need you to teach it to your kids, teach it to your friends. Who doesn't want an abundant life? First root is connected to the abundance. There are three levels connected to prosperity, church. There's the level of sufficient, right? Eh, I'm doing okay. I got enough. Where you say I'm satisfied, you know. There's a level of abundance where there is plenty, a large quantity, rich, wealthy. Then there is the level of super abundance. This is an amount that <laughs> you can't even count exceedingly, excessively amount. The first fruit honors God is connected to abundance. The first fruit, when you honor God in your first fruit, it's connected to abundance. There's another translation that I want us to look at, Proverbs 3 and 9. It says, honor the Lord with your goods and possessions. Like I said before, in, in these times, Israel, they based their economy off agriculture, right? It was the only nation that depended on the economy of God. The rest of them, the rest of the nations did not. They demonstrated honor. So lift your hands with me and say, I will honor the Lord with all my possessions. I know a lot of us can't say that because one, we, we, don't, we don't think we're going to do it. We don't, we don't believe what the word says. I will honor the Lord with all my possessions. Some of us are afraid to say that. Why does the, what does the word honor mean? The word honor means precious. It means worthy, reverence, and to value with the highest dignity. If I had to define honor in one word, it would be value. What value? What, what, what do you value? What, 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 what value is? What you honor? What you value is what you honor. If I value my children, I will honor my children. If I value my wife, I will honor my wife. What you don't value, you don't honor. How many of you value God? God, not me, not your pastor, but God. God must have the highest value, the highest honor in our minds and in our hearts. If I, if I value someone, 
I will honor them. If I value my wife, the moment her birthday comes or any special event, sometimes it doesn't even have to be a special occasion. If I value her, I will honor her. When we don't value something, we never honor it, right? The Bible says, wives, honor your husband. Honor your husband. In other words, honor him. We can say we, 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 can say we honor somebody with our mouths all day long. Yeah, I honor God, but where's the evidence? Where's the fruit? All we hear is lip service. When, when was the last time? Think about it. When was the last time you honored God? I'm not talking about with your mouth. When was the last time you honored God? One thing I love about the Bible is when it tells you to do something, it also tells you how to do it. Right? The scripture says, honor the Lord with thy substance. It didn't say with your mouth. It didn't say just speak it and just say it. The scripture says, honor the Lord with thy substance. Substance in this context is money. When was the last time you honored God with your money, with your possessions? When was the last time you honored God saying, God, you gave me this. I want to give it back to you. Now, I know what the devil put in your mind when I said that. That ain't the only way I can honor God. I can honor God uh, uh, through this. I can honor God through this. Yeah, you're exactly right. I can honor God with my music, with my talent. You are exactly right. However, in order to get this blessing, that abundance, in order to get that blessing, God is not asking you to honor him in no other way except with your substance. Why is Pastor Charles preaching on giving like this? Why is he preaching on giving for the entire month? He must need some money. I don't, but I want my people, I want God's people to be blessed. If you want to be blessed, you have to live by biblical principles. I know we don't like prosperity teachings, but in order for us to do better, somebody got to teach it. Somebody has to teach us. Somebody has to break the generational curse. How can we break the generational curse when we don't have the tools? We don't know what the word of God says. I know you ain't at home reading it for yourself. Somebody has to teach it. A lot of us really don't value God. I know that's the ugly truth. I know it's, that's hard for some of us to hear. We say we do, but when we look at what the Bible says and how the Bible says the proper way of honoring God, we don't honor or value God. We value what God can do for us. But what have we done for him? What have we done for him? We say we value God. We say we love God. But according to the scripture, do we really? When we don't give our first fruit, we are saying, I'm not valuing God. You're probably saying, that's, that's a, you're stretching it a little bit now, Pastor. We are not valuing God. We're just doing mouth service. Honor causes people to put value on something. Honor is our value system to something. In this ministry, I plan to continue to teach and create a culture of honor. I had a hard time, Remnant Church. I'm telling you right now, I fought and struggled with that thing. I had a hard time with this series of giving because once God told me to teach it, I told God, I don't want to teach on honor. I don't want to teach on giving because the people are going to think I just want their money. But if I don't teach my flock about honor, if I don't teach the flock about giving, and the blessings that come with it, who else is going to teach them? It is my responsibility to teach you and equip you. The Lord knows that I am not looking for gifts. The Lord knows I am not looking for money and honor. I just want to be a servant. I just want to create disciples for Christ. I am looking for you to learn how to honor God. Remnant Church, never steal honor from God. Don't steal the honor from your spiritual father. When you oppose the honor from your spiritual father, the Bible says, not me, the Bible says that you don't value him. When you don't honor your wife, you are saying you don't value her. When you don't honor your husband, you are saying you don't value him. 
Let's stop doing lip service. Let's stop doing mouth service. Let's stop saying I love you, but not showing it. Let's stop saying we honor God. We love God and not showing it the biblical way. We've done it the, the, the worldly way for so long. All we do is say a thing and put no action behind it. Let's honor God biblically with our substance. The Bible says women honor your husband. In other words, he's saying value him. Honor denotes the highest value. Some say, well, do I, have the, do I have a reason? No, you don't have to have no reason. We probably got plenty of reasons why we need to honor God. But we shouldn't do it just because of the reasons. We should honor him because he is God, period. God has been good to us. But I don't honor him because he's been good to me. I don't do it because he is God. I do it because he is God. That's why I do it. Not because of what he's done. Not because of what he saved me from. Not because the close misses and the near calls. I honor God because he is God and God alone. He must have the highest, the highest honor and value in our lives. God, I honor you. I value you. I worship you. I love you. A son honors his father. How many sons and daughters do we have tuned in this morning? There are still some nephews that didn't even comment, say nothing. Remnant Church, I believe the word of God. A son honors his father. Value, esteem, considers precious. It's time that God restores honor in the church and in the family. That we can consider our authority precious and worthy. Because the first honor is to God. The second honor is to the father. Let's go to Malachi. I know y'all getting tired of me. Y'all don't like to hear about money. Let's go to Malachi uh, chapter one, verse six. A son honoreth his father and a servant his master. You see the position? A son honoreth his father and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is mine honor? Remnant. Don't do it because you feel pressured. I never would demand honor for myself. I'm teaching you to honor God and then your natural father and then your spiritual father. I'm teaching you that and, and will continue to teach that. If then I be a father, where is my honor? In other words, God is demanding honor. I can't demand honor, but God does. And if I be a master, where is my fear? This is saying the servants will relate to the father as a server and he has to fear God. But the son and the father relates with honor. You don't get close to me because you're afraid of me. No, no, no. You value me, not because I demand you to, but you value me because of honor. Honor, value, consider God precious. God is the most valuable person in my life, church. I love him. I honor him with my hands, with my feet, with my heart, with my money with my family, with my possessions, with my job. I honor God with my time. I honor God. So as we approach this new year, it has already started for me. As we approach this new year, let's start with honoring and valuing God the biblical way. God is our Father and our Lord. Lord meaning that he owns us. Oh, yeah, they don't like that. See, y'all don't like when preachers talk like this. Yeah, God owns you. He owns me. He owns us. Whether you like it or not, he owns us. He owns everything that we have. Lord means that he not only owns us, but everything that comes with us. Lord means that he is the supreme God and authority in our lives. Anything that is not submitted to his lordship it's not going to be his responsibility to take care of. So honor him, not just with your finances. That's just the beginning. But every area of your life, we need to be honoring God. Every area of our lives. I value God. Everything that I do is conducive to value God, to honor God. Why do I do certain things? Because I value and honor him. Why do I spend so much time in my word, so much time on Facebook, so much time with ministry? Because I value him. Hollow or honor is the highest law in the kingdom. 
The highest supreme law in the kingdom is to honor our heavenly father first. You know, growing up, <laughs> my mom used to always tell us, and she still does to this day. I was just telling a friend this the other day. She always had this saying, scripture, put God first in all that you do. She still says that today. As a man, we can't demand honor. I can't tell the people, you have to do this for me. I never asked. And if anyone said that, I came and asked or demanded anything from them, they, they lied. People honor me as a man of God, as an act of gratefulness, and in their mind and heart, they value me. Because what I am doing is creating a culture of honor, a culture of hope here, creating hope for the hopeless. And right now today, people are fighting against people because they honor me. Amen. Because the spirit of Antichrist is against honor. Don't allow the spirit of Antichrist use you. See, people will be stuck on who you used to be. Things that you used to do. Places that you used to go. They'll get stuck on that. And, 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 and what, what they do is they use that to, to say, oh, no, he ain't who all he called out to be. And try to withhold your honor, withhold your worth, and try to get others not to honor you as well. So the Bible doesn't say honor thy God with your mouth. It doesn't say honor thy God by attending church. A lot of us think just because we go to church, we're honoring God. A lot of us think because we in, attend church that we're putting God first. No, 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 no. It doesn't say honor thy God by being nice or by going to church. No, it says honor thy God with your substance, with your possessions. Your possessions are your goods, your real estate, your money. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's, let's get down to the nitty gritty. Let's, let's honor God that way. Y'all don't like when preachers talk like this. I know it. But people, for whatever reason, they don't honor God with what they have accumulated over the years. They want to give God whatever they want to give God because we think it belongs to us. We think that we have already tithed from it. God is saying, no, if you value me, young man, if you value me, young lady, if you think that I am worthy if you believe that I am your father, if you believe that I am your source, you talk a good game. Yeah. If you believe that I am your supplier, if you believe that I died and rose on the third day, if you believe that I healed your child, if you believe that I healed your mom, if you believe that I saved you and snatched you from a drug infested lifestyle, if you believe that I provided for you in the middle of this pandemic, God is expecting you to honor him with what you have accumulated. We've cheated God. And you've probably saying, but I ain't accumulated nothing. I don't got no job. I ain't got nothing. The devil is a lie. Yes, you do. Everyone has a little wealth, medium wealth, or a lot of wealth. Wealth is what you have accumulated. Resources and possessions. God is saying once a year, he wants us to honor him with our possessions. Some of us stingy. People are saying, you telling me to sell my house? No, I'm not telling you to sell your house. But what you can do is you can tie off that amount that you sold the house for and then give the whole to God. That's what you can do. I, can, I, I feel the tension over the computer. Some of the tension is because, one, we love our money so much and honor our money over God. And some of the tension is because I'm touching on things that hadn't been touched or hit yet. I'm touching on things that you were never taught and it's new to you. The scripture says possessions and first fruits is in your Bible. I'm not making this up. I wonder why. I wonder how many of us will still value God after this message. The scripture says, if you honor me, if you value me, you will give me your first. Not your last. Not your second, not your third, not your fourth. In the streets, we like to say, man, I love bruh so much, I give him my last. But no, God wants the first. God wants, to, God wants us to offer him the first, not the last. 
right? The streets got that, that, that fake love. I don't know why we think that you give somebody your last, you love them. God says he wants the first. If you believe that I am worthy, if you believe that I provided for you during the pandemic, if you believe that I am still alive and can deliver you and still answer prayers, I need your first. If you do, God says that he is asking for the first, not the last. Why the first, God? Why not the second? Why not the last? Why you got to take the first? Why you got to take it off top, God? God hates to be second. The first always belongs to God. The first is consecrated. The first is sanctified. The first is dedicated and separated for the exclusive use of God. The first is holy. The first establishes priority. In the kingdom of God, everything that is first has the priority. Man was created first, so man has the priority. The Bible says first the apostles. That doesn't mean that they are better. That doesn't mean that they are higher or mightier. No, it just means that the first has the priority. So God says, if you value me, Daniel, if you value me, Shamanda, if you value me, Pastor Nick, if you honor me, put me first. Everything that is first is dedicated and consecrated to God. When we touch it, when we retain it, when we keep it, it becomes cursed. Don't keep what belongs to God. Don't withhold what belongs to God because it then becomes curse. You see, many people now, their finances are a mess. They make good money, but they're still struggling. Some people look at you and, and they make less than you and they wonder how you make it look so good, how you make it look so easy. Tell them it's because you put God first. Tell them it's because you honor God with your first fruit. See, many people now, prosperity never comes to their home. You see many people now, they die prematurely, 17, 18 years old, 23 years old. They gone too soon. Why? Because they don't value God with their first. God wants the first. God wants his on top. Why? Because in the Old Testament, he said the firstborn, the first animal, the first harvest. He wants the first. Because if you put him first, he will put you next. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first rule of all increase, not some, all your increase. The first fruit is not the tithe. It is not the 10%. The tithe is what you give every week, every two weeks, every month. It's income that you have coming in on a regular basis. The first fruit is given to God once a year. That's all he's asking for once a year. The first root is the first of everything. The first contract, the first increase, the first promotion, the first check of the month, the first business deal, the first hundred thousand, the first million in the name of Jesus. It's the first money that comes. If I was to get a job today, the entire first check is my first fruit. Let's not get it twisted. God wants the first to establish our priority. Don't touch what belongs to God. You will be cursed. If God says that the first belongs to him, give it to him. If God says he wants you to honor him with your first, give it to him. The first. The first. Give God the first. Don't delay. Because when we delay, that's being disobedient. Don't withhold. Don't say, well, God, let me go invest it and make a little off of it. Then I'm going to give it to you. No. No. Don't say, God, let me save it first. And when I get up enough money, then I give it to you. No, because when we withheld, when we keep the first away from God, we then open ourselves up to be cursed. Amen. Let's give God his first. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we thank you for this word. We choose to honor you. We choose to walk in obedience concerning your word, concerning the first fruit. And God, as we learn today about first fruit, we plan to put this principle, put this kingdom law in practice. Father, we, we, by faith, we look to reap every benefit that comes along with it. We will bless you. We will honor you with our first. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to pray for those who want to give their life to Christ. This is a great time. This is holiday season. Uh, there's so much depression, there's so much loneliness during these holiday times. 
And so at this time, I just want to pray for you guys uh, that want to give your life to Christ. God said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. And so we can always go to God in prayer. So Father, we thank you for everyone watching. We thank you for every soul. Every soul that wants to give your life to, to, that wants to give your life to Christ, repeat after me. Father, thank you for life, health, and strength. Forgive us for our sins. Every sin that we committed from the time we were born up until this present moment. Now God, deliver us and wash us clean with your blood. We believe that you died and rose on the third day with all power. Thank you for saving us. To get more information, I want you guys to hang tight. We're gonna move over to the altar. We're gonna go to another room, we're gonna go to the altar where sacrificial gifts are given, sacrificial offerings. Not only that, where people will stand on the altar and give their life to Christ. And so we got some uh, prayer warriors there, some prayer intercessors there. I'll be there, my wife will be there, and we want to get more information for you if you choose to give your life to Christ today. Just go into the room, select the room, and we'll be able to help you there. So God bless you, and we love you. Happy Thanksgiving. It's now offering time, tithe and offering time. If you don't have a church, this is a good place uh, to give your tithe and offering. Um, and as we prepare uh, for the new year, as we prepare for you guys to put in practice what you just learned, first fruit giving, tithe and offering, alms, um, seed. Um, I pray that you practice it, and this is a great time to practice it right now. So Father, thank you for everyone who has the heart and obedience to give according to your word. God, we know that we cannot beat you giving. And you said that you give seed to the sower. So as we sow, God, we expect a harvest. We expect you to rebuke the devourer for our name's sake. We expect you to open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing that we will not have room enough to receive. Thank you for blessing us. We pray for traveling grace and mercy over these holiday times. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Happy Thanksgiving and God bless you.